welcome. In this video, I'll be giving an overview of the acre apartment development model. Now, our library of real estate financial models has been lacking a robust apartment development model. And so while the all-in-one model has the capability to analyze multifamily deals, it's more a generalist tool than a specialized one. And so given my proficiency and experience in modeling apartment development, I thought I'm going to set out to build what I view as the ideal uh, apartment development model. And for me, the ideal meant, uh, number one, it had to be able to do everything that your typical institutional quality model can do. Uh, number two, it needed to be simple and intuitive. Most models you find have way too many tabs and are way too um, confusing to open up and know exactly where to go, uh, where to enter your inputs and where the outputs of those inputs are housed. And finally, I wanted the model to be visually appealing. It, it seems like we build our models and the, the look of the model is, is an afterthought. Uh, we don't think about the fact that we may have to share this tool with equity partners, with potential lenders, etc. And so you want it to look good. That means consistent fonts and formatting elegant buttons and the like, uh, and, and some of those things I have incorporated in, into this model. So with that, let me spend a couple minutes and give you the overview of the model, and then I'll follow up with videos that will walk through specifically how to use the model to underwrite an apartment deal. But first, you'll notice uh, one of the first things when you open the workbook that there are only three tabs along the bottom. And one of the tabs is the version tab where uh, changes to the model are tracked and where I've included some links to help you uh, find tutorials, etc., support for the model. Other than the version tab, you've got one report tab, the summary tab where your, the salient outcomes of your analysis are, are shown. Uh, and I've used what I view as attractive charts to visualize the data together with just some basic reporting of, of your assumptions. And then along the top, I have just an investment description, a place where you can drop in strengths and weaknesses, and then a box to drop in either a map or an image. And this tab is set to print, uh, with the idea being you model out your deal and then you print this page and it has everything that you need in order to make a decision about the deal. The only other primary tab is your underwriting tab. And this is where the great majority of your inputs are entered. Now I say great majority because there are some optional modules that you can turn on depending on the level, the, the level of granularity that, uh, that you wanna get into with your underwriting. But uh, certainly your first pass, you're only, more than likely you're only gonna be opening or using this one underwriting tab. However, uh, in order to have uh, the functionality of an institutional quality model, what I've done is I've broken this tab up into sections. And these sections are laid out vertically. So you scroll up and down, all of your inputs are along the left-hand side, and then your cash flows based on those inputs run to the right. The sections are also purposely laid out such that as you're modeling a deal, you'll model in this order from top to bottom. So you'll start out by entering the investment description. You'll then model out your development cash flows, right? Those are your negative cash flows in your DCF. From there, you'll move through, you'll model out your capital stack. Then you'll move into operating period cash flows where uh, you'll set your unit mix, other income, uh, operating expenses. Uh, and here is where you have two optional modules where, for instance, you can turn on an, a, a retail income module. And so for a, say for ground floor retail, which is not uh, atypical of a multifamily deal, and it will open up an optional tab where you can enter uh, some uh, retail income and expense uh, assumptions. Same with detailed operating expenses. Uh, the, the base 
here uh, has 10 operating line items, but if you want to detail out, say, your R&M or detail out your property taxes, you just toggle this switch here and it opens a separate tab where you can detail out your expenses. Then you, we, remo we move to our reversion cash flow. So if in our DCF, the development cash flows were our negative cash flows, operating cash flows then are our, our positive cash flows during operation, Reversion cash flow then is going to be our sale at the end. And within this section, we enter all of the, the, uh, the assumptions related to the sale. And then finally, we move to the returns. Uh, the outcomes uh, laid out out here to the right are the cash flows, and here to the left are the summary uh, of those cash flows and the returns themselves, both property level and partnership level returns. And here we have the option to turn on a double promote. So if, if this, you are the sponsor and you have an equity partner and the sponsor uh, entity, uh, and then you as the sponsor entity seek out a limited partner and you have a double promote, you can turn on a double promote to module, which doesn't open a, a separate tab. All of that's done here within this uh, underwriting tab. And then finally, sensitivity analysis, where you can sensitize uh, various assumptions, vacancy, exit cap rate, expense growth, and income growth. Now, uh, you may say, well, it's a little cumbersome, right, to scroll up and down to these different sections. Uh, and, and so what I've done is along the top here, I have frozen the top few rows and I've included in this frozen section, first, just some high level uh, return outcomes, levered IRR, levered equity multiple, and your development spread. Those I view as uh, the most important uh, return metrics. You can change these if you'd like, but above that you'll notice buttons. And these buttons here will take you to the various sections within the underwriting tab. So let's say that we're down here at sensitivity analysis. We want to make a change in the development uh, section, our development cash flows. We can either scroll up to it or we can hit this button and we'll just take, it will take us immediately to the development uh, period cash flow section. Maybe we want to move down to reversion sale cash flows. Uh, maybe back down to returns, sensitivity, head all the way to the top to description. And thus, rather than uh, putting these into separate tabs, they all go within the underwriting tab and laid out just intuitively uh, top to bottom with little buttons to help you move back and forth. And so once we've entered our outcome or our assumptions, we can view the outcomes again on the summary tab. Uh, and, and so that's the uh, acre apartment development model. Again, I'll follow up with some training on how uh, to model out these different sections. But again, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, reach out and thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.